Dear Sabbath School family, welcome to lesson three, the message to the seven churches. Remember that for an interactive verse by verse decoding of the book of Revelation, you might visit us every Sabbath at the Jinjin Seventh-day Adventist Church in Queensland, Australia. Otherwise, I highly recommend you to go and visit your local Seventh-day Adventist Church and enjoy that interaction. But today, we will continue exploring the universality of the message found in the book of Revelation. As you listen to this commentary, I invite you to reflect and ask, what could this message give me today? What could this message given from the Father to Jesus, to the angel, to John, to us, mean for us today? In His love and grace, what is Jesus revealing to you today? Now let me ask you something else. Have you ever done something that is so good that you are praised for it? Perhaps at home or at school or work, perhaps in church. How about having done something so bad that to this date you wish you never did it? Has anybody ever given you sound advice so much so that it changed your life for the better? Well, this is what our Sabbath school lesson is all about this week. In God's loving mercy, He reveals open the condition of the church members, and He does so in order to seek your eternal benefit. If you ever found yourself knowing that something in your life is got to change, but there seems to be just so much going on around you that you find it difficult knowing where to start, then you are not alone. Perhaps you don't uh, even know or perceive that a change in your life is needed. Christians since the first century have faced the same spiritual dilemmas. In fact, this is what is happening to the seven churches of Revelation. But my friends, there is hope. Jesus Christ is ever ready to send you an extra portion of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is so inter interested in you, so interested in seeing you being one of the overcomers so that you can spend time in eternity together with Him as well as with those whom you love. He so wants you in heaven that He delivered messages to the seven churches which were as relevant today, to them there and then as they are relevant to the church today. Yes, beloved, this message is relevant to you today, in the here and the now. This lesson presents to us the divine methodology used to deliver the message to the churches. First, Jesus introduced himself. We have done that. We have spoken about that in chapter 1 and 2 in the previous lessons. Then he calls the church by its name. Then he reminds it uh, the church of its journey, both good and bad. Number four, he counsels the church with a solution. And then five, he asks the church to listen. Number six, he presents its reward uh, for those who overcome. And number seven, it insists, Jesus insists to the church to hear him out and to let him be part of their lives. Well, why did the church need the message? Let us think about the condition of the churches and why, why was that needed? Why, why was the state and the condition of the churches so that their attention was required? We spoke about Ephesus last week. Although they were faithful, they lost that zeal that they had for God. Now, Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 tells us that Smyrna, was suffering and will suffer evermore amidst a pagan Satan worshiping world. Revelation 2 12 to 17 says that Pegamos was also facing trials in the middle of satanic practices. Despite not denying Christ by their speech, they gave up to compromising practices, thus denying God's transforming grace in their lives. In Revelation 2 18 to 29, we hear of Tithara, which was given up to false teachings. We hear that instead of following the Bible, they follow influential people in the church blindly. The message to Sardis is found in Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. One that depicts the church as a lethargic and disinterested church, coming to 
to church just to bench warm, bench warm all along. Philadelphia is found in Revelation 3, 7 to 13, a church that, though small, was found faithful. A church whose faithful, faithfulness will be recorded with direct access to the new Jerusalem. And then we have the last church, Laodicea. Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 tells us that this church believes to be a self-sufficient church, living its, in its materialism, being full of Adventist knowledge and jargon. However, it remains spiritually uncommitted. As we read these messages, we see Jesus' stern desire for his people to retain that which is good. And without being politically correct, he also points out the bad and the worse. Jesus, God himself, the Alpha and the Omega, who knows the beginning to the end, knows that no one, that no one who is not committed to living righteous lives on fire for God can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Beloved listener, we are here today and i ask i like to ask you where are you standing do you identify with the message of ephesus of smyrna of pegamos perhaps tythara sardis or philadelphia or perhaps with that of laodicea if you are like me a child of god in need of his grace and restoration you might find yourself thinking that you could be a regular member of various of this church is not only one. Today, I am here again to share with you that there is hope, help, and reassurance. Jesus himself has introduced himself to you. God himself talks to you. He's calling you by name. He's sending your Holy, his Holy Spirit to you. As you listen to this commentary, the Spirit of God, which ministered to the seven churches, is ministering to you today, showing you the areas needed to build your character. He counsels you with a solution to experience the fear of God, the beginning of all wisdom, to retain the good and reject the bad, to repent and accept God's calling in your life. He calls you to be an overcomer so that nobody takes away your crown. My dear listener, I leave you with the glorious rewards, those glorious promises given to the overcomers. Jesus says that the one who overcomes will eat of the tree of life. He will not be hurt of the second death. He will be given to eat of the hidden manna. He will be given power to overcome the nations, will be clothed in purity, will be maintained in the in the book of life will be made a pillar in the temple of God. He will sit with God in his throne and it will inherit all things. Fa uh, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit want you in heaven with all of these rewards. My brother and sister, the evidence is clear. This is without a doubt a message of love. One that calls you and I out of our sinful conditions to repentance. To live in newness of life, united with the divine. It is my desire and prayer that you answer the call today. That you let Jesus Christ in your life. That he might come in and that he might dine with you and you with him. So that you live a fulfilled life. A life full of hope. Our hope of glory. Amen. <music>